good evening, everyone. We're going to get started here, and uh, I'm going to kick off with the uh, invocations. Um, I just want to mention before we do the invocations, uh, just uh, uh, we do our invocation, try to keep uh, Steve Crane, uh, remember him. Uh, he was a longtime member of our nominating committee uh, here for the Clark County RMC and uh, passed away here uh, this past year, so I just wanted to uh, acknowledge that. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this beautiful evening. We thank you for the freedoms that you've given us that we could start businesses called co-ops that serve all different pockets of America and especially the REMCs, Lord, that just provide power that we take for granted today. We just thank you for all the folks in our history and that continue through today, Lord, that just help to keep the lights on for us that we take for granted. We just thank you for all those folks, uh, whether it's the people in the marketing with the computers or the uh, linemen and the ladies in the office that, and the gentlemen that uh, help with billing and the, all the IT. Lord, we just thank you for the resource that you've given us. We thank you, Lord, for the food that we've had this evening. May it bless us, our bodies. Grant each of us a safe trip home, Lord, after this meeting. And we thank you for everybody that came. And Lord, just please bless this co-op throughout the coming year with the decisions and the uh, things that are coming up and the policies and things that just seem so crazy at times. And all these things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time, as is customary, we're going to ask Kevin Cox to come forward and he will present the national anthem. So if you would rise, please, and we'll do the national anthem. If you would join me in singing, please. Oh, see, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous sky o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh See does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Whew, thank you, Kevin. I'm going to call this meeting, annual meeting 2024, annual meeting to order. Good evening, everyone. It's wonderful to see uh, those of you that came this evening. Uh, we don't have a huge crowd here, but we had a good crowd attend overall and uh, participate this evening. So uh, I'm Mark Evans, your board president. It's good to have uh, seen everybody this evening. And I just want to thank you for staying for the business meeting and uh, for everybody that came tonight to be a part of this important annual event that is part of our bylaws. So today I'd like to share some information with you about our new facility and with a highlight video. But before we do that, I'm going to uh, thank a few of the following businesses and some, introduce some folks to you before we get started with that. So making the 2024 annual meeting a success, I'd like to recognize Bob Wright with the Beef House for an excellent meal. Had a lot of comments this year about those ribeyes, how thick they were and yummy. Uh, this, they did a great job, so wonderful. And uh, Riverton Park Cheerleaders for helping to serve food and bus food and bus tables. Uh, Wabash Valley Power Alliance, Adrian and Dave over there. Uh, Indiana Electric Cooperatives, Amber Knight and Marty Jones. Right over here. We had Big Bounce uh, Company for the kids' entertainment this evening. Uh, Nick with GG Magic and Balloons. The Indiana Blood Center, they were uh, here this evening doing a very important community service for us. 
uh, Department of Corrections. I don't know of anybody here with them, but I know they were helping. I saw some uh, folks helping out. Uh, Endeavor Communications and Indiana 811. So those were the businesses that were here. Let's give them applause and uh, folks that helped out. We have some elected officials or representatives here tonight. I'd like to recognize those individuals. Uh, Indiana State Senator Spencer Derry was here earlier. I, don't, I guess I don't see him in here right now. Uh, U.S. Senator Todd Young's office, Diane Powell. Diane, good to see you. This time I'd like to introduce our board of directors. So if you would uh, stand when I say your name, District 1, Doug Brown. District 2, Keith Blades. District 3, Janine DePlante. District 4, Shane Johnson. District 5, our singer, Kevin Cox. District 6, Mike Carpenter. And of course, I introduced myself earlier, Mark Evans representing District 7. At this, thank you. At this time, I'd like to uh, introduce uh, Chad Jenkins. He's our CEO of Park County REMC. And last, but certainly not least, is our all important attorney, uh, Alicia Bowling with Parr Ritchie. Our legal counsel uh, law firm there in uh, Lebanon and in Indianapolis, and they uh, represent, uh, Par Ritchie represents us, our, it's our legal counsel uh, for Park County MC. And also, uh, lots of folks standing around and been around the room and uh, all the whole area tonight giving rides and so forth. I uh, just want to, uh, all the uh, Park County, you guys can sit, but all the Park County REMC and Park Professional Services do this so we can kind of see who you are, appreciate, all right, thank you. Uh, this meeting would not be possible without you. All right, we got the video ready, right? It's ready. We've been serving our membership from a new facility out uh, 5001, right? US 36, East US Highway 36. So uh, since early April, uh, so let's enjoy this highlight video and see the word around. The new facility brings all of our employees, supplies, and equipment together to better serve our members. When the town of Rockville approached us about purchasing our facilities, we knew it was a great opportunity for everyone. We were outgrowing our space, which made it very difficult to store larger equipment. This new location provides ample space while also allowing us to be more centrally located within our service territory and power our own facility. Previously, our office was located on the Rockville Town Square with our warehouse behind it. The pole yard was several blocks away on Whitetail Lane with additional supplies and equipment, while our tree trimming service, Park Professional Services, was located several blocks further east on High Street. Our new facility brings everyone together, uniting our employees from four locations into one connected facility for improved efficiency and communication. The board and management team discussed many different location possibilities, but when looking at the center of our service territory, we knew we needed to be located near Belmore. This new location will serve our members well into the future with design options for expansion if necessary. We are happy to enhance our services by improving response time, being more accessible to our entire membership and adding a drive-through for our members' convenience. We are very proud of this new space and are ready to continue serving our members' needs. Park County RMC was incorporated in 1937 by a group of rural citizens and farmers to bring electricity to our rural communities. Our first pole setting was in 1939, and what a feat it must have been to set poles at that time. We started with just one truck, a 1939 Chevy. We built our headquarters on the Rockville Town Square in 1947, which allowed adequate space for operating and building, with a single bay garage in the back. As we have continued to grow, we built a warehouse behind our office, the same warehouse 
that is still standing today. We extended the warehouse as much as we could, but we were simply outgrowing our space. Equipment alone has greatly increased in size over the past several years. These locations served us well for nearly 80 years, but we needed more space to serve our members and accommodate our employees, supplies, and equipment. Our new centralized location consolidates all of our operations. We look forward to serving our membership from our new location and striving to exceed member expectations. Moving our headquarters from the south side of the square in Rockville to 5001 U.S. Highway 36 in Rockville is one of the biggest changes in our cooperative's history. While the cooperative has grown to serve almost 12,500 meters across portions of six counties, some things will never change, such as our dedication to serving our members. Our members are the heart of our cooperative. We are dedicated and proud to serve our members and be active in our communities. Rain, shine, day or night, our employees stand ready working behind the scenes to serve you, our members. Your membership is valued, and we look forward to continuing to serve you from our new location. Hopefully this video showed you how positive this change has been for both our membership and the employees at Park County RMC. We look forward to serving you, our members, for the many years to come from this facility. Uh, I think it was about 80 at the old one, so probably be at least 80 at this one, won't it? <laughs> so anyway, we appreciate uh, uh, everybody's time here this evening, kind of um, checking that out. And uh, a lot of you have been seeing that over the past uh, year and a half of it getting built. So moving on to the next part of our business meeting. Our bylaws, we have the secretary certification that proper notice of the meeting has been mailed and that a quorum was registered. So at this time, I'd entertain a motion to approve our 2023 minutes, which is right there. A second, right there. So we have properly been moved a second to approve the minutes of the 2023 annual meeting. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion passes. Minutes are approved. I'd like to now call on the CEO, Chad Jenkins of Park County RMC to give his annual report. Thanks, Mark. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us for the 2024 Park County RMC annual meeting. As Mark said, my name is Chad Jenkins, CEO of uh, Park County RMC and Park Professional Services which is our wholly owned subsidiary that trims trees uh, for our system. I'd like to introduce several new teammates. Uh, they're not currently in, in here with us, but they're out uh, working either on the lines or they're helping clean up from, from tonight's festivities. Uh, we have several new team members. The first one's Cade Birch. He's a journeyman lineman, or Cade Baker, sorry. And then we have Justin Birch, who's an operations field technician with us. Uh, Derek Hoke is a, a new groundman. Uh, he's going to be hopefully going into the apprenticeship soon. And uh, Louis Monick and Justin Weimeyer are uh, lineman apprentices that are actually at school this week. So they are uh, at climbing school uh, and should be home tomorrow at some point. And then we do have two new tree trimmers that we've added this year. Uh, the first one's Patrick Kelly, and the second one is uh, Daryl McCain. So we're, we're happy to have all of them on board, and, and uh, I thank them for their willingness to serve you, uh, our members. Tonight, I want to talk about reliability and, and our role in it. You may ask why. Um, our role as your cooperative is to ensure that you have reliable power. And we take that responsibility very, very seriously because we know how crucial it is not only to our lives and your lives, but to our communities as a whole. And I'm sure all of you are familiar with the phrase, knowledge is power. Tonight, I want to change it just a little bit to talk about the knowledge of power and to talk about the power industry. If you've experienced an outage, which I won't ask you to raise your hand, but I know that we all have at some point, it was most likely due to some type of accident. So it was either a car wreck, a farming accident, um, an animal, some type of tree, tree limb, 
um, or maybe even potentially a storm of some type. And th those are things that we prepare for. Those are things that we respond to here locally. Um, tonight, we actually had two of the linemen that were on call. They couldn't be with us at the annual meeting because they were restoring, the power, they were restoring power outages actually north, northwest of Greencastle. So we have people that are on call 24 seven to respond to those type of outages. But I'd like to discuss power and power outages in a different form, in the form of not having enough. Not having enough generation to meet the needs of when you wanna turn your lights on, we just simply don't have enough. The demand for electricity is increasing. It's increasing not just in Indiana, but throughout the Midwest and across the country, driven by a variety of factors. Data centers are an, um, not a new thing, but they're new to Indiana and to the Midwest. Um, there's, there's several that have been announced, some up north. Um, they are uh, large consumers of power. Artificial intelligence that's on our phone, that we use on our computer. Um, electric vehicles, there's uh, one electric vehicle sitting right outside that door. The other one's a hybrid. And just, just sheer economic growth. Um, there's been some recent legislations about onshoring. So, for example, chips. Chips is a new big thing. Uh, not, a, not a new thing, but a, a new big thing to produce in America, which is great. The, the EIA, so we're a very acronym heavy industry, so I'll explain these to you, which is the energy information industry, projects that the power demand will reach a record high for the entire country this year. And then next year, it's gonna be a new record. So we're seeing record after record. So what does that have to do with 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 the lights going out, you may ask. So there's always a forecast that's always looked at every year. NERC is another one, another acronym that we have. It's the North American Electric Reliability Corporation. They have forecasted within the next five years that rolling blackouts could occur in all our parts of 19 states. Indiana is one of those states that's part of the 19. But why? While the demand for electricity is increasing, the supply is decreasing. In May of 2024, the EPA issued a rule that impacts energy production from power plants. The rule will force the retirement of fossil burning or always on power plants, such as coal and natural gas. The hard timelines to close these plants are add technology, and that technology is not commercially available at, at a utility scale at this point. While renewable, while renewable energy sources like solar panels and wind turbines are coming online, they're intermittent, meaning they don't produce power when the sun doesn't shine and when the wind doesn't blow. Always on generation is decreasing and we're relying more and more on intermittent power each day. That coupled with the time frame to build a new plant, it takes a very, very, very long time to build any type of new plant. If the board behind you decided that we wanted to build a new plant today, it would not be unreal, unrealistic for it to come online in 2030. Why? It takes many, many years to permit them and many, many years to construct them. Increasing demand coupled with decreasing supply is my concern. I don't say this to worry you, but to, to, understand, to ensure that you understand the challenges that we have ahead of us. Along with electric co-ops nationwide, we are engaging our elected officials, both locally and on the federal level, because our focus is to deliver affordable and reliable power. As we look to the future, I ask you to take three things away from tonight's meeting. Advocate, support, and educate. So advocate against unrealistic regulations, support and participate in our energy efficiency programs and become educated in all forms of generation. The future requires all of the above energy mix. We have to have reliable baseload. It will always be necessary. Reliable power sources, including wind and, so wind and solar generation, are a part of the solution and are a part of our future. I'm planning to continue this conversation in our newsletters in the coming months, highlighting each of the three areas that I just pointed out. But if you'd like to talk about this further after the meeting, I'd be more than happy to, to hang around and talk with any of you. I'd also encourage you to stop us at community events, not only this one that we have at our annual meeting, but 
We're at many community events throughout the year. Please stop and talk um, to, to me or to anyone that's there about it. But I would like to thank you for being here tonight and for your support in our cooperative. I'd now like to introduce Alicia Bowling with Par Ritchie. Thank you. Thanks, Chad. Uh, pursuant to Park County RMC bylaws, the nominating committee met on May 23rd, 2024, and duly nominated the following nominees to serve on the Park County RMC Board of Directors for their respective districts. For District 4, Shane Johnson, and for District 5, Kevin Cox. No nominations by petition were submitted. Therefore, the following slate is up for election to serve in their respective districts for three-year terms. Shane Johnson, District 4, and Kevin Cox, District 5. As there are no contested elections, I would entertain a motion from the floor to elect Shane Johnson for District 4 and Kevin Cox for District 5 to serve three-year terms on the Park County RMC Board of Directors or until their successors are duly elected. Do I have a motion? I have a second. Second, okay. All those in favor say aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Congratulations, Shane and Kevin. Chad, or Mark. <laughs> well, again, thank you everybody for coming to this year's annual meeting. Again, as Chad said, uh, the doors opened. Uh, we appreciate interaction with our members and certainly uh, as information comes out, hope that you will help advocate on behalf of your co-op, member owned, member served. Have a safe trip home. Thanks again for coming.